classify triangles, and there are two different ways to classify triangles. We can classify them by angle measure, or we can classify them by the lengths of their sides. And you can classify them by both at the same time. So if we're going to classify them by angle measure, we have acute triangles have all acute angles. So all angles are less than 90. And basically, these are kind of skinny triangles. You know, the angles are small. <clears throat> um, and then you have obtuse, in which one angle <clears throat> is greater than 90. Now we can only ever have one obtuse angle in a triangle because triangles have a total angle measure of 180 and so if you have one angle that's more than 90, you couldn't have another angle that's more than 90, right? You could only have one. So there's only gonna ever be one angle greater than 90. And these are the ang triangles that are kind of wide, spread out, because they have that one obtuse angle. Okay, and then we have equiangular, equa being equal. So all angles are equal, and that means they're 60 degrees. So every angle is 60 degrees. And I would try to draw that, but I'm not very good at drawing exact 60 degree angles, so I'm just going to pretend that each of these is 60. Okay. And then you have a right triangle which has one right angle, which is 90 degrees. And I can cheat on this one. My perfect right triangle that I just drew freehand. So we're going to practice classifying some of the triangles. So if you go to your packet on the very first page. Did I give you one? Okay. Um, you have that first section. We're going to just classify these as acute, equiangular, obtuse, or right. Um, so this first one would be yeah, equiangular. And we look at all of our angles. We've got a 95 degree angle, which is greater than 90. So this one's going to be we have an exactly 90 so we have a right all three are less than 90 so acute number 5 and 6 why don't you guys try it on your own real quick everybody get up to send acute The other way we can classify triangles is by sides. And this is um, by side length. Okay, and so what you have is if you're equilateral, all sides are the same length. Or they're congruent. Um, and they can be any length at all. It does, there's not a set length. It's any length, just so long as they're all the same size. Size. Scaling occurs when no sides are the same length. So all are different. However you want to remember that. And isosceles occurs when two sides are the same length. Um, ways that you can know if the sides are the same length or not will have these marks that show congruence. So if they have the same number of little dashes, they're the same length. In a scalene, 
we'd have one dash, maybe two and three, so all different, or nothing would have any marks at all on it. And then isosceles, you get two with the same size. Now a triangle can be both. Okay, um, we can have a an obtuse isosceles or a right isosceles or a right scalene or an obtuse scalene or an acute scalene. The only thing you cannot have is like an obtuse equilateral. What about like You can, still you can have, you could say a triangle with both equal angular and isosceles, but if it's equiangular, it's also equilateral. So that's what I was going to go. All equilateral triangles are equiangular. So you can't have an equilateral right or an equilateral obtuse. All equilateral. Here, I'll write it down at the bottom. All equilateral are equiangular. Okay, so you can have isosceles and scaling with obtuse and acute and right triangles. But you can't have equilateral and any of those because if you're equilateral, you're equiangular. So you can mix and match on the others. So you can mix and match the right and the obtuse and the acute with isosceles or scalene. Those can all mix up and you can have, you know, an obtuse isosceles or a right scalene, things like that. But you can't have a right equilateral. It's impossible. If you're equilateral, you're equiangular. So those two have to be together. All the other ones can mix and match. Does that make sense? At all? So let's classify some of these. Um, just on the same page, the next little section. Um, we're going to first look at the triangle ABE. And so that's this triangle right here, ABE. Now, we want to say whether it is equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. We have one side that's labeled 9. We have one side that's labeled 8 times the square root of 2. And we have another side that's not labeled at all. So basically, we can assume that that one's not the same as the other two because it's got a congruent mark. But it's going to be, well, we're going to go with the equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. So none of the sides are the same, so it's scalene. Okay. And if we look at triangle EDB, that's this triangle right here, EDB, we have a mark on this leg and we have a mark on that leg that tells us both of these are eight, which actually tells us that this was eight over here, but anyway. These are both eight, so two sides are the same and one side is different. So this one would be isosceles, because two sides are the same. Um, then we can look at E, B, e, C. That's this triangle right here. And I've got a mark here. I've got two of these, so you add those together. That side, this whole length is going to be 16. This one's 8, fix that one's 8. And then this is 8 times the square root of 2. So I've got, again, three that are completely different. So scalene. And finally, we have triangle DBC, which is this yellow one. And all three have the marks for congruency. So they're all the same. So it's equilateral. Just, 
just whatever we're asking. Um, but now, here's the thing. Um, equiangular, because equilateral and equiangular end up being the same thing, all equilateral triangles are equiangular and vice versa, we very rarely even ever use the word equiangular. We just usually use the word equilateral because if you're one, you're the other, and equilateral is easier to say than equiangular, so we just usually use equilateral. So if you were to write equilateral when it had asked for equiangular, I would not count that wrong because it's the same thing. So if you want to just remember equilateral, that's fine too. The properties of the equilateral and isosceles define like missing variables and side lengths. So if we know we're in isosceles, we know that two sides are the same length. And here we have AB and BC are congruent. So I'm going to highlight those. AB and BC, those are the two sides that are the same length. And if they're the same length, that makes them equal. So I can set those equal to each other and solve for x. So subtract 2x from both sides. Uh, 4 times two, minus 2 is not 4. Add 3 to both sides. 2x equals 8 and divide by 2. And I get that x equals 4. Okay. Now that was the first part of this question. It told me to find x. But it also said, and the length of each side. So now I need to plug x in and find the length of each side. So, hold on one second. Okay, so we're going to plug in x, which is 4, to find the length of each side. So I'll get 4 times 4 minus 3, which is 16 minus 3. So this side is 13. And here I'll have 2 times 4 plus 5. Well, I didn't even actually have to do this one because these are the same length. So that's 13, and here I'm going to have 4 plus 2, which is 6. So my sides are 13, 13, and 6. Uh, on this next one, it's telling me that this is an equal lateral triangle. So all three sides are the same length. And since all three sides are the same length, I can pick any two. set them equal to each other. Do you guys like 3x, 5x, or 4x? 4x and 5x? Okay. So I'm going to use those two. So 5x minus 8 will be equal to 4x plus 1. I'm going to subtract the 4x from both sides. Again, because it was positive, so I'm subtracting it. And 5x minus 4x is x, minus 8 equals 1. And so I'm going to add 8 to both sides to cancel those out. And I get that x is equal to 9. Since they're equilateral, I only have to plug x into one side. And I'll know the length of every side, right? Because they're all the same. So do we want to multiply 9 times 3, 4, or 5? It doesn't matter. We can pick any one of those. Okay, we'll multiply by 4. So I'm going to plug this 9 in, and I'm going to do 4 times 9 plus 1. So it was 36 plus 1, so 37. And every side is going to be 37 because they're equilateral. What I'm going to do is I'm going to label the congruent sides first, RS and TS. So this is the isosceles again. And over on this problem I have an equilateral so all three are the same. So since these are the same they're equal. Okay. I want to Get rid of the 6x over here. 
So I subtract it and oops, wrong color. And I get 3x plus 2 equals 8. I want to get rid of that plus 2, so I subtract it. And I get 3x equals 6. I want to get rid of this 3, so I divide it. And I get x equals 2. So that's the first. Again, I need to find the length of each side also. So I need to take that 2 and plug it back in. Um, these two are the same, so I only have to plug it back into 1. So I'm going to use the 6 because that's just smaller. So 6x plus 8. So 6 times 2 plus 8 is 20. So that means this one's also 20 because they're the same. And then I do need to plug in over here. So I have 3 times 2 minus 1, which is 6 minus 1, which is 5. So, hmm? uh, no, I'm actually, it's going to find x and the length of each side. So finding x is the first half of the problem. I also need to find the length of each side. So just be careful that you read those carefully. Because sometimes they'll ask you to do that, sometimes they don't. Um... Questions on that one at all? Is that okay? Okay, then we have our equilateral, which again, because it's equilateral, I can pick any two. I like two and five better than seven for some reason. So I'm going to use those. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I usually pick whatever's the smallest just because it's easier. <laughs> Okay, subtract 2x from both sides so that those cancel. And I get 3x minus 21 is equal to 6. Add 21 to both sides so that those cancel. And I get 3x is equal to 8. Ah, no, not 8. That's a 21, not a 12. Make sure that you write the correct number down when you're doing these, like I didn't just do. It's not, um, 6 plus 21 is not 8, it is 27. Then I divide both sides by 3, and I get x is 9, again. Okay. Since all three are the same length, I only have to plug into one of them. So I'm going to use this one. I get 2 times 9 plus 6, so that's 18 plus 6, which is 24. So all three sides will be 24. If you look at number 8 and 9 on the homework, they give you an equilateral that says FGH is an equilateral triangle, and then they give you the lengths of the sides. So you need to actually draw and label the triangle. And it doesn't matter which point is which letter. You just label it. Once you've labeled it, then you have FG is x plus 5. GH is 3x minus 9. And FH is 2x minus 2 and it's equilateral, so it'll go like that. Um, and then 9 will be kind of the same thing, except you have an isosceles, so only two of the sides are equal. So you know, you'll know want to draw and label that kind of the same way. Okay, this one requires the use of the distance formula. which is x is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2. Sorry, what is, not x, d. I don't know where I came up with that one. y1 minus y2 squared. So on number 10, we have, um, we have a triangle, and we want to determine if it's isosceles, scalene, or... Um, equilateral. Okay. 
Yeah. No, it's plus. You're right. Thank you. I'll fix that in a second. Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to draw your triangle first and just sort of label it. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to put the points here just so I can keep track of them. Okay, so I've got these three points and they make a triangle and I want to find the distance between each of the sets of points to find the length of the side. So this lets me know I need to find the length of KP, PL, and KL. So I'm going to do KP first. And so I have negative 3 minus 2 squared plus 2 minus 1 squared. So this would be, in this instance, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. And I plug them in here. x1, x2, so x1, x2, y1, y2. And so I get negative 5 squared plus 1 squared, which gives me 25 plus 1, which gives me the square root of 26. And now I don't have to simplify that. Once I get to do the square roots, I can just compare the square roots from one to the next to the next and see if they're the same length. So this side is the square root of 26. And then if I do PL, um, I can call this X1, Y1, X2, Y2, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. But if I have X1 minus X2, so that's going to be 2 minus negative 2. So minus because that's there, and negative because it's a negative 2. And that's a happy man, so it's going to be positive. And then I have 1 minus negative 3, which is another happy man, so he's going to also be positive. Double negatives make a positive, don't forget. So that's 4 squared plus 4 squared. Sorry, that's too long. So that's the square root of 16 plus 16. So that's the square root of 32. So this length is the square root of 32. So at this point, I know it's not equilateral. It could still be isosceles if this side is one of those two. But I know for sure it's not equilateral. I've eliminated that. So it's either isosceles or scaling. So we're down to two choices. And so I'm going to do KL. I'm going to use X1 and X2 like that. So I have negative 3 minus negative 2 and 2 minus negative 3. Those guys are happy, so they make them positive. So negative 3 plus 2 and 2 plus 3. So I get the square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared gives me the square root of 26. So since 2 are the same length, it's 